you can't stop this train. Israel's coming hard. Giving, pro, giving all praises to you. There's a video. Uh, just the brothers had just left. They dropped me off. Um, we were watching some of the fight. And they left before the fight ended. Uh, Joshua. AJ versus... Uh, um, what's his name? Um, Usyk. Uh, AJ fought a good fight. He was... He's, he, the muscles, too many muscles, you know. He fought against the Usyk, which they guy been boxing since I don't know how long. A lot of experience, and he's too fast. So that's my take on that. But no, no shame, no shame for AJ. Anyway, um, I'm into this here. This is a video. I kind of watch a few minutes, and I'm into the 15 minute mark. IUIC sit down with uh, Pastor Sherman Blendon. And this is how y'all should have did it the first time. You set up a meeting with a church. Instead of having a debate with them, you, you, you see if they're open to have a meeting. Now, I remember when I first came to the truth, it was me and a friend of mine. We, went, we saw a church at a particular place. We went in the church. They opened the doors to us. And we said, can we sit down with the pastor and the, whatever congregation deacons and so forth, and they invite us, invite us, invite us in, invited us in to a room, and the pastor was there, a so-called black pastor, and you had, let me say about 15 people, I would say half women and half men, and it was almost like this setup right here, and uh, I went into Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I noticed how the men, all the men, they kind of got out of their chairs and kind of got next to me and, and the brother that was with me. And the woman kind of stayed with the pastor. And when we eventually we left and the men were following us, what, what does this mean? What does that mean? They were really into it, right? And this reminds me of these gentlemen right here. Um, you know, they're church people, pa Pastor Sherman, a Blandin just gave him a sit down and a little bit that I heard so far they, these brothers were in the spirit look like I said before we get on other camps but if they doing the right thing we're going to praise them I don't care if they're IUIC ISUPK uh, Deacon a car the reason why I said Deacon a car because I just did a video uh, with him dealing with this agent you know what I mean by Deacon a car means uh, Sakari and any of you others, and I'm going to say this again, you guys, 1990 tours, they have been in this thing long before a lot of these new guys, shame on you. Shame on you for not being on fire. Do you know what time it is? It's time to be on fire, man. This is, this, this, we're in the home stretch. You don't, you don't sit down in, in the home stretch. You play football, pot one of football, high school ball, college ball especially college ball, but especially the pros, you know, you, you, you in the Super Bowl, you ahead and you slack because you think you're going to win. And then you can turn around and get the, 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 uh, the, the whole thing can turn tables on you because you're not focused and you're not diligent. This is not time to be slacking. All you guys, I'm talking about you guys from one West that are still around that have jumped on the YouTube wagon. But where you at now? You ain't, you ain't doing nothing, man. And it, it, this is not the time to take a break. We see, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, you don't. And I'm not going to mention names because there's so many of you that are just not on fire. Anyway, we was uh, we were down, downtown. We had a unity camp. But the camps were split up. It was... Uh, I found out a couple of brothers from D.C., I'll say teachers, from D.C. came up. I remember their, I recognized their faces on video. Um, I call it the D, they call it DMV. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Delaware, Maryland, uh, Virginia, uh, DMV. And uh, you had a, a couple of uh, teachers, elders teachers from Atlanta, now the, now the one brother 
I remember him. He came up a couple of times. He came up a couple of times. Um, but he looked like a, another brother in our camp. So I thought it was the brother because I said, you, you got a haircut, you know, because he got the other brother got curly hair and they looked at each other. And they were like, oh, these y'all brothers look like twins. You know, y'all, they're not exactly like twins, but y'all, if y'all were to say y'all brothers, people would believe it. Um, who else? Um, Ahashaya or Hashaya, however you pronounce his name. Uh, he was, he came up, said a few word, quick words with him. Uh, he's from the, you know, NC, GMS, uh, North North Kakalaka. Um, and then you had you had uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, you had a couple other faces uh, that uh, that I that that I never never met. You know, when I went out to Dallas the last time I've been out to Dallas, but I know them brothers from watching them. You know, I don't know all these know all these brothers' names. Um, I would when we were lining up. I told them, look, don't hug me, don't hug none of the brothers, especially me, because I don't want you to get sick. I had a sickness. And I didn't realize, I caught it from Sakharan. We thought he just had a cold, but it was something that was going around. And it got me the next day, I felt Sunday, I felt it all week. It was a point where I said, man, I, I think I'm going to die. I better go to the hospital. But I, I just held on, and I'm, and I'm good now. So it's like a week, like a seven-day bug. But I didn't know that the Apostle Gabar had the same bug and the Apostle Ramlov had the same bug because we were in, all in the same car, the four of us. Um, so it was so, I mean, it was so much pain in my, in my belly. I was, you know, the sniffles. I, I, just, I was just feeling like shit. And I felt it coming on. I tried to stop it, but nope, wasn't going to happen. You know, I did the lemon, the pure lemon juice, organic lemon juice with the goggle. I did the honey and lemon juice goggle, and I thought I kicked it, but it came through. I had to deal with it, and then uh, what was it? Thursday? Uh, no, it was Friday morning. It was Friday morning when I got up. I was in so much pain. I said I ain't going to the camp. And then Saturday morning, when I got up, I felt much better. So I said the the the, the symptoms is leaving out of me, but I didn't know that that. Apostle Gabar had it, and Apostle Rhyme had it, or Rhyme Lob had it, and they were just as sick as me, or maybe worse, but we all had the same bug. And uh, so when we got with these brothers, you know, they tried to hug us. I said, oh, don't, don't, don't even try to hug us. You don't want to get this, you don't want to get this bug. This bug, this bug knock, knocked me on my ass, but all all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakar Kodash. I could, I feel it definitely leaving out of my system. You know, we went out and did camp, even though we were sick. Sometimes when you push yourself, it gets worse, but we like, F it, go ahead. Anyway, please forgive me. Let me just go on into this video right here. So, so all you men that came up, you know, all praises to you, you know, and, um, you know, from what I heard, it was a, a beautiful camp because, like I said, we had a unique camp, but we had various camps scattered out in a particular area. Yeah, we had this one video where this one guy, he just couldn't see nothing, man. He questioned everything. And I got mad. There was one point where I said, bring out scripture, bring out, because we couldn't even get in scripture. We were trying to explain stuff that you really couldn't teach. But I said, that's a that's a learning experience for us and also for the for the camera to peep to see that people gonna book up against this truth, man. If they if they ain't meant to get it, if their eyes are not open, they're not gonna get it. Anyway, let me get right into this. I hope you can hear this and I will comment here and there to make it easy for my on myself. So they're going through Deuteronomy 28, and I believe they're in verse 47 ish. So let me let you listen. And uh, if in Greece, Rome, USA. But remember when they landed on the moon, what did they say? They said, what is that? When it died. Uh -huh. They said, the eagle has landed. Oh, they 
it said that. Read it for me. Verse, verse 49. I know you know what I'm saying. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. Remember, same nation that put your bond and actually talking about the same nation. So again, they landed on the moon and said, the eagle has landed. Now they could say, oh, that's talking about Rome. But Rome carried the eagle. You're right. Rome did take us down. But um, uh, America also carried the eagle. When, when the Lord sp spoke about the end of the world in Matthew 24, that word world means an age, eon. It means a, a time of rulership. It means a time of rulership. The Egyptians' rulership, you know, 400 plus years. We were in there for 30 of those years and in captivity for 400 years, and then Egypt went down. So that was uh, the Egyptian world and the eons in, and, uh, going into the word eon, eon, a certain time of rulership. So the Lord said he's going to save us at the end of the, of the world. So East, uh, the Roman Empire has two worlds. They ruled, they went down for a thousand years, then they came back up and ruled again. When you go to Christopher Columbus, the Renaissance, coming to the other side of the world. And this is the reason why they use the word new world because the old world is Europe. And then you got the new world, which is the, uh, what is it? The fourth part of the earth. And I spoke about that. Uh, anyway, so let's listen on. Uh, this brother right here is going off with the fade. You know, Bishop Nate, you gotta, you gotta stop that man. They do it because, they do it because the leadership allows them to do that, man. Okay, that's their emblem. That's who they are. But God said, what did he tell us about 48? Who 48 again? Therefore shall I serve thy enemies. Thy enemies. Thy enemies. Okay, the Bible is very specific. Okay, what he was talking about. Not your friends. Of course, we need to disclose a little piece. Any other nation on the planet Earth it, you know, the, the, the Armenians, there was a, 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 a slaughter, slaughter of the Armenians, I believe it was 1915, by the Turkish. And to this day, and to this day, an Armenian, I grew up, I had Armenian friends. They ain't nothing but Jake. They ain't but, but, nothing but Jake's, man, Negroes. That look, they, a lot of them look Latin. Some of them have a whitish look to them. But, um, they, to this day, they can't stand the Turkish. They would not marry their, allow their marry, daughter to marry a Turkish. They would not have their son marry a Turkish. That's how much hate there is. And Tur Turkey to this day don't admit that they slaughtered them. They, they say it was a war, whatever the case may be. But um, for Jake, I mean, it should be easy. If you say the eagle and it's America and the white man is our enemy, you're supposed to be thinking about how, how many times you got pulled over by, pulled over by the cop. How many times you went in the job and you couldn't get the job and the next week a white guy gets the job? You know, you, you had these experiences. So for you to, to, to say, well, oh, you, you can't call the white man, that's a problem. You know what that's called? That's called Stockholm Syndrome. Look it up or somebody could put it in the uh, comment section. All right? Verse 50. I'm going to go with well, well, that's, give me, give me 68, and then 68, well, I'll, I'll open the floor, so you want to say something real quick. I hope he comes back to 48, because it speaks about yoga iron around their neck, which the Romans never did. Remember, when the Romans took, took down that region of the world, uh, one of the provinces of Rome, the Roman Empire, was uh, Palestine. They never put yokes of iron on us because they never put us in slavery. What they did was they made us tributaries. What is a tributary? That means a, a, a mighty nation took you over because of their military might, and they made a deal. They said, look, you can keep your land. You can keep your customs. You can do whatever the hell you want, like we never got here, but, you, but we're going to tax you. Whether it's 10%, Everything that you have, we want 10% of it. Now, the bigger your empire is, is the more tax that are coming in. And that's in the scriptures. 
Let me let me let me go to this real quick. We should all know this, but for the, some of the ones that are newer. Let me go. I believe it's Matthew. As a matter of fact, I know it's Matthew too. Bear me for a minute. Or is it Luke 2? I'm sorry. It's got to be Luke 2. Luke 2. Let's try Luke 2. Okay, Luke 2, Luke 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days uh, that there went out a decree or the demand from Caesar Augustus, which was the longest living rule, uh, Caesar. He ruled for, some scholars say 42 years, others say 44 years. And it says in the, in the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra is uh, 11 and or 12, because it breaks it down in, in both of those chapters, that that even the, the second longest rule wasn't even half the rule that uh, Augustus had or Octavian had. He was the nephew, I believe, of uh, Julius Caesar. The next Caesar, I got to look it up, he ruled for maybe 20, 20 some odd years. There were some that didn't even rule for a year. It says Augustus, okay, that all the world, the world should be taxed. Was it the whole world? No. It was a Roman. This is this you can use when they go to John 3.16. The, the Romans didn't rule the tax the whole planet Earth. Let's look up this word world. Okay, it's oikomeni. Now, oikomeni means the whole planet Earth. In this case, right here, the inhabited Earth. No, it was uh, it was a dispense of the Roman Empire, which which was vast. So all of the subjects under the empire, the province of that empire, had to pay tax, which is tri tributary. And this uh, taxing was uh, first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed and everyone into his own city. That's what it said. That was a census. The census came from the Roman Empire. They didn't put you in slavery and make you work. They say you do what you do. You're a farmer. You're a carpenter. You're a fisher. All you got to do is give us a percentage of what you get. And they had they had tax collectors, Republicans, would go around. And the reason why they had them going around, because they would look. They would see a guy with a farm. Then they would count the sheep. Oh, he got 100 sheep. He got 50 goat, goats. You know, he, 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 got, he got this. He got that. He got so many acres of land. I don't know what it was called back then, hectares or whatever. And they calculated, okay, he owes 10%. Okay, so we got, what we got to get out of him. He got 100 lambs, we're going we gonna to get 10 of those lambs. He got 50 goats, we're going to get five of those goats, you know? And then people said, oh, hey, hey well, at least we're not in slavery. At least we ain't got yokes of iron on our neck. So when they say it's talking about the Roman Empire, they're wrong because the Roman Empire didn't enslave us. They, they uh, put on us a tax or a tributary, made us tributaries. You know, I don't do, let me do this. Let me do this here. Just to see what these guys say. Bear me for a minute. Deuteronomy 28. Forty-eight. Okay, Cambridge is afraid to tackle it. A yoke of iron, Jeremiah 28, 
which I believe that's the Babylonian Empire. Now they couldn't say Rome because they knew that the Romans didn't enslave us the way the other nations did. They, they, we became tributaries unto them. Yeah, they don't want to touch this. Okay, it says right here, until we have destroyed thee, the Jews were under the Roman yoke. Figuratively, I mean, uh, uh, figuratively we was under the yoke, but we were under, we were under physical yoke pursuant to uh, Deuteronomy 2848. So let me come back over here. They taxed us, so you want to call it a a physical, uh, uh, a literal, uh, not a literal, uh, fig figurative yoke. The figurative yoke was a tax, was a tribute. Who actually put us in yokes of iron around our necks? The uh, slave, slave region, the, the Babylonian and so forth. But the last time we were, had yokes in our ne on our necks was what? American slavery when we got over here. So let's come back over here. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Remember, he's talking to the Israelites. They just came out of Egypt. And he said, if you obey God, you set you on high above all nations. But if you don't, all these curses are going to come upon you. This is one of them. He said, what again? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He shall should, he should bring you into Egypt again with ships. Give me that uh, definition of Egypt real quick. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Oh, so God is calling Egypt the house of bondage. House of bondage or slavery. Remember. Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. That's what they were doing. Okay. Read 68 again. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right. So again, what people historically went into bondage via ships? That only happened to us. Okay. The Bible is talking about the Israelites. Read again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. The same enemy that put yokes of iron next. It says, There, you get off those ships, you should be what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Slave men and slave women. You can get off those ships. Right? And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you under those conditions. Prove that in verse 29, real quick. Verse 29. Where it says, No man shall buy you. Show, show and, you that and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not put a prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. No man shall save thee is the same thing this was saying here. No man shall buy thee. That means save or redeem. Okay? Because we're still in the same place that our forefathers and foremothers were sold on ships. We're still in the same exact place. Okay? And when you look at this history right here with Israel, when they got delivered from Egypt, Moses took them out of the land. Right? So no more in the land of our captivity. Yeah, it says in Deuteronomy 28, 68, in the place where I said unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. That's talking about the wilderness. He told them that in the wilderness. They were not in Egypt. He said, you're going to go back to Egypt, the place where I speak unto you, I'm paraphrasing. That was the wilderness. That was the wilderness. That was on the other side of the sea, the other side of the river, in the, in, in the wilderness of, the, of Zin. You know, people like to break down and say that. See, that's, he said it. When, when did Moses say it in Egypt? No, he didn't say it in Egypt. He said it outside of Egypt. Go to a biblical map. Where did Moses get receive the laws? In in um that wilderness between the 
uh, the, the Gulf of Suez and the Gulf, Gulf of Aqaba. His point is that's what the purpose of Christ's second return is. He's the redeemer this time. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. A lot of black people, you know, when we talk to them, we say capital, but we don't know the exact location where we come from. Jerusalem is actually the northeast Africa. It is a part of Africa. But so called white men in Jordan, Suez, and now, and you find in the name, we call it the Middle East. That's a lot. We come from Jerusalem, which is, which is the northeast Africa. So that's our land. Not, not really. Not really. I don't know where they got that from. But let's see what let's see what they say. Let's see what Google says. Is is the land of Israel. in Africa. Should have said a part of Africa. Africa. Question mark. Let's see what it says. Okay, this right here is this is Africa. Can you say this is Africa? Israel, Middle Eastern country on the Mediterranean Sea. So I guess the Mediterranean Sea is part of a water, body of water in Africa. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea is regarded by Jews, Christians, and Muslims as the biblical holy land. Its most sacred sites are in Jerusalem within its old city, the Temple Mount complex includes the Dome of the Rock, Shrine, the historic uh, Western Wall, al Aqsa Mosque, and the Church of the Holy Sep Sepulchre, Israel's financial hub, the Tel Aviv, you know about that's pink, they call it Pink City. But, uh, Is the land of Israel? Let me do it, put it this way: an African country. Let's try that. Is Israel considered Africa? What continent is, is Israel in? Israel is located in Asia at the crossroads of Asia, Europe, and Africa. So technically, you can't say that it's in the land of Africa. It belongs to Asia, but it is also part of the Middle East. It is bordered on the north by Syria, Lebanon, on the west by the by the Mediterranean Sea. It's, it's, it's a separate land. And another thing, let's do this. The 12 tectonic plates. Okay. There's 12 tectonic plates. When you have a, uh, uh, an earthquake, they, you have tectonic plates that pull like a rubber band and they snap back. That's when you get an earthquake. Okay, let me see here. Okay, you got Africa. Um, wait a minute, that's, that's uh, 
I need a bigger picture. You got the Red Sea. Eh, technically, you got the Mediterranean. You got the tectonic plate, which covered Africa and me the Mediterranean. You got the uh, Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Uh, Israel will be right around about here. So you're stretching when you say it's part of the continent of Africa because it's separated by a tectonic plate. But it's close, so people will say that. And you got to know these little details because when you speak to people out there, they're going to they're gonna question you on that. So for you to say, let me bring this one up. Okay, this is a tectonic plate. I'm oh, sorry. This is Africa. I'm trying to find the... Uh, It's, let, me, let me do another one. Let me do another one. Let me do one more. Get it. Uh, let me see. Israel is somewhere in around here. Now, it, you can say it's touching Africa. Is it actually in the continent of Africa? Not really. I wish I could get a, a close, a, a better detailed map. Let me try it this way, and then I'll move on. Technically, it's really not. You can say it's touching Africa, but they, they're saying it like it's in Africa. You know, the, you know, Bishop Netanyahu has a thing. He has a hard on for Africa. But don't take that the wrong way. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. That's the which is the mother of us all. That's our motherland, okay? Jerusalem, which means the, the city of peace. That's what it means, the land of peace. Jerusalem, right? See, if this brother right here, he doesn't know anybody, he's in, 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 in the ignorance, the most I winked at, but now, you know, Acts 17, verse 30, commandeth all men which are Israelites. You see that right there? Look like a razor hit to it. His razor definitely hit his head. Razor hit his head. He got the hair sticking back. Let me uh, do this. You see this brother with the dreads and the bleach dreads and all that? If he wanted to join GMS, any of these guys who want to join GMS, they're going to have to cut the sheepskin, man. They're going to have to cut that. He's going to have to grow his beard. He have to grow, grow this right here. Before we could even consider letting them in the camp. Now, if they say we want to be down with IUIC, they're good. They're good. Which is a, this, this is a custom of the heathen, man. The apostle Paul cursed out the Corinth because he, he noticed that uh, you had a lot of men, m maybe most of them, if not all of them, they had the, the long hair with the dreadlock braids, long, they use a crispian pin or whatever. And he cursed him out for it. He said, you're going off. But see, the IUIC won't say that. And they're going off and not saying that, man. What does it say? What is that? Galatians 5? You're supposed to correct your man. I believe that's Galatians 5. Let me go to that. 
Galatians chapter 5. I'm sorry, chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So let me look up the word fault. Let's see what the word, word, the Greek word goes back to. To fall beside or near something, a lapse or deviation from truth and uprightness, a sin, mislead. So they, they, uh, that was a lapse of judgment because it's understandable. Going back to Acts 17, the Lord winked at you in your ignorance. When you had that long hair, okay, that braids or whatever you had, that was in your ignorance. You didn't know any better. <coughs> <coughs> but now you have to repent. You're a man, man not supposed to have long hair. But somehow um, Bishop Nathaniel overlooks that. Where the hell am I? Okay, let's listen to a little bit more. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. No man shall save thee is the same thing this was saying here. No man shall buy thee, that means save or redeem. That's right, redeem. Okay. which means buy back. Who's going to buy us back? We are going to get redeemed. By who? By Yahweh Shai. He's going to come with the ships and he's going to be beside of here. Take us out of here while he's destroying this place. He's going to buy us back. Same place. And our forefathers and foremothers were sold on ships. We're still in the same exact place. Okay. So when you look at this history right here with Israel, when they got delivered from Egypt, Moses took them out of the land. Right? So we're still in the land of our captivity today. So they, they took them out of this land back to our own land. Which is true. Can I get that real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, yeah. history. This point is that's what the purpose of Christ's second return is. So he's the redeemer this time. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. A lot of black people, we don't know where we come from. We say capital, but we don't know the exact location where we come from. Jerusalem is actually the northeast capital. It is a part of Africa. But so called white man, you don't see where it's the now. Because you find the name and call it the Middle East. And that's a lot. We come from Jerusalem, which is which is the northeast capital. So that's our land that we're looking to be taken. It's northeast of Africa. You know, you're stretching. You know, it's close. It's touching. Uh, you know, the land. You can say technically touching the land, but then you have the tectonic plate, uh, which you have the tectonic plate in Africa. On one side of it, you have the land of Israel. But like I said, I got to get a closer map in that hey, you, you, you're dealing with uh, you know semantics you know getting technical it's no big deal we know where the land is it's not actually in what's called Africa today Galatians chapter 4 verse 26 but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all that's the, the mother of us all. That's our motherland, okay? Jerusalem, which means the, the city of peace. That's what it means, the land of peace. Okay. Y'all want to wanna say something real quick? We're going we're gonna to go more into... Um... I give credit to these brothers in the church. They all got beards. But they're still practicing heathenistic customs. You know, the bleach, you know, 
men are not supposed to be so concerned about their hair. Identifying. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the type of person I am. I actively listen. So I'm not going to take my lack of response. No, it's not. So I'm actively taking all this and taking it. Thank you. And these brothers, they they, they are they they're listening, man. They got they got the the, the lap laptops out and all that. They they're listening, man. And if they if if they truly open their minds, they'll get this truth, whether they accept it or not, whether they elect. At the at the end of the day, when they, everything's said and done, it's all about being the elect. That's why this guy at the camp today, he was at the camp all day. And then we kept going back to ground zero, ground zero. We almost get them into some form of truth. You know, we, uh, there was a point about the slave trade. Well, how do you know there was slave trade? You can't deal with a Jake like that. You can't get, deal with a Jake that questions everything about. Look, I can question everything. I can go to my mother. How do I know that your mother? I want a DNA. You, are you going to go up to your mother and say, I don't think you're my mother. I want a DNA test. I don't think you're my, my father. I want a DNA test. You you dealing with a woman? You can't. You got spies watching her because you don't believe she's faithful. You you gonna be a miserable person, man. You know. Twenty-eight. Yeah. Any questions, real quick? Any testimony? So, one thing you are equating Deuteronomy. As a prophecy to assembly? 100%. That's what Moses was telling the Israelites. Because you're now listening. And if you had an open mind, you, it's crystal clear that it's talking about us. Let's back that up um, with Luke, with Christ. Let's see what Christ said. Let's see. Christ, I hate to fucking hear the word. It's like uh, fingers, fingernails on a chalkboard. Uh, a chalkboard. You mean to tell me you can't, Bishop Nate, you can't call the, the Lord his true name, Yahweh Shai? Or just say the word anointed, because Christ is Christos, which is Latin. It's like a bastardized English form of the Latin word Christ or Christos, which means anointed. Why don't you just say anointed? I'll be a lot more happy than that. What, what the hell happened to you that you don't, you can't, frame out your mouth, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Did you make some type of deal? I'm talking to Bishop Nate, Bishop Nathaniel. When you came out, when you started getting better, you, you were sick, you said you were poisoned. Um, and you got to watch people send you shit. And I'm going to say this, y'all brothers out there and your sisters, don't send us per perishable stuff. You know? You know, like food or herbs. Just don't, don't do that because we don't know all y'all. All right, you can mean well, but we don't know if you're you you you're poisoning us or anything like that. Sometimes you got to be straightforward like that. This is Luke chapter twenty one and verse twenty, and, and the reason why I'm going here is because um, let me give me the scripture real quick in Galatians. Galatians three. 13. I want to show you this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Right. So there it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So we read in Deuteronomy 28, and we teach that to our people. They, they, they have that precept in their mind and say, No, 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 we don't need all that. They didn't reply to us, you know what I mean? Those things are done away with. But watch what Christ said in Luke chapter uh, was it 20 or 20, 20, 20 watch this. Chap uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. He said, when you see Jerusalem, the homeland, surrounded by armies, know your destruction is near. Right? So then you notice this. Talking about a future event that's going to happen. Read it again. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, 
then know that the desolation thereof is not the destruction of you. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Then let them which are in Jerusalem flee further into Africa, flee into Egypt. Okay. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Right. So if you're not in Jerusalem, don't come back. That's what he's saying. You know? For these be the days of vengeance, that all things. A lot of them f fled north in Europe, Asia Minor. Um, a lot of them in Africa. A big amount of them fled into Africa. The fulfillment of that is uh, uh, Revelation 12. Um, uh, great. Or is this, let me go to it. Let me go to it. Let me go to it. This is pretty much basics. Okay. Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 14, and to the women which represent Israel were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, great escape, which is Africa, the wilderness is Africa, into her place, her, the, her, into her place is America. That's why it says in Hosea, in the plate one, in a place where it was said, ye are not my people. There it shall be said, you the sons of the living power. The Rom Romans, we knew that we were Israelites. The, under the Greeks, we knew that we were Israelites until this uh, Antioch's Epiphanes forces not to be Israelites. Second, uh, Second Maccabees 2, uh, verse 6 to 9. Place is America where, where she is nourished for time, time, and, and, and half a time from the face of the serpent. What does it mean to be nourished, be taken care of? Everything we get, Deuteronomy 28, in the want of all things. So that's America right there. The wilderness represent Africa, because a lot of us fled into Africa, into a place, into America. How do we get to the place? By slave ships, Deuteronomy 28, 68. Basic information before leaving earth. Which are written may be fulfilled. That's what he's talking about. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Christ is talking about things that are written before time, they're going to be fulfilled in the future. Okay? So those curses in Deuteronomy 28, Christ did not take those completely out of the way when he came on the scene the first time. But Christ came and died to take out the way with sacrificial love to give Israel a chance to repent and redeem themselves back to the Father. He's telling us right here, for all things that are written may be fulfilled. He's telling us that. Read it. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Let me look that up. Luke 21. Luke 21. Twenty-four. Wait a minute, did I? Let me try this. Okay, 22, I'm sorry. But these are the days of vengeance. Who got the vengeance? The Romans, which are Edomites, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. This is what I want to do. See what the so-called Bible experts have to say about this. Okay, they're, they're, they're right. The days of vengeance, Daniel 7, 26 to 27. 
It's not talking about the seven year tribulation as these Christians view. Daniel channel Daniel chapter nine took place already. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. The Messiah the Messiah was going to be killed. But not for himself. Yeah, because he died for Israel. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's the Romans led by Vaspasian um, Titus. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. The flood is talking about they came in the army, the, the, um, the what do you call it, uh, the legions, which represent about 7,000 men, 6,000 something uh, foot, foot soldiers, and about something like 700 horsemen. And, and to the end of the war, desolations are determined. That's talking about they took, killed a lot of us off, and a lot of us fled because a lot of us knew about the prophecies of the Lord. So that, so that go, so Luke 21 goes hand in hand with, with Daniel 9. has nothing to do with a seven, seven year tribulation. It said Joseph is again and again calls attention to a, a mom abnormal wickedness of the Jews as the cause of the divine retribution which overtook them in the wars of the Jews. That's the book of Josephus. He declares that no generation and no city was so plunged into misery since the foundation of the world, which is not, yeah, it was a bad time. But that was not the time of Jacob's trouble. The, Jacob, the time of Jacob's trouble is yet to come. All things were, which were written. So let me see. I'm not going to go to all of them. Okay, I'll go with this one. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, what is that? 2849. That. 250, 57, you read it, it's talking about the Roman, the Roman, uh, when the Romans besieged us, 70 AD. Oh, another good one. Uh, I got to start using it. Psalm 79, verse 1. O, o power, the heathens are come into our inheritance. That's, that's the fulfillment. Uh, your holy temple have they defiled they lay Jerusalem on heaps that's a fulfillment of the Romans coming in this is uh, Micah 3 verse 8 but truly I am full of power in the spirit of Yahweh and of judgment and of might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and Israel's his sins. In other words, we we were taken down by the Romans and ultimately ultimately by Esau coming to America because of our sins. But let's come back. Let's listen to a little bit more. See, I'm making it easy for myself. I'm watching a video and I'm stopping it, you know, going to the precepts or whatever comes to mind. But woe unto them that are with you. See, this is this is something that churches don't do. They don't really get in deep into the scriptures. They hoop and holler. Praise, dance. They'll read stories about King David, but they don't put the thing together. That's why they can never come to the realization that they are those people in the Bible. Because they don't read the Bible the way we read it. We read the Bible as a scholar. And what's a scholar? You can go to the second grade and be a scholar. A scholar, the, the word scholar means school. Anybody that goes to school. Oh, he's my son is a scholar. What grade is he in? He's in second grade. Well, how is he a scholar? Because he goes to school. Anyone that it normally means, you know, like higher education, but the word scholar means school. Well, let's come back over here. Let's listen to a little bit more. Child. And to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, upon this people, the Israelites, oh, you know, and they shall fall 
by the edge of the sword. This is Christ talking. He's still talking about his people. He says, the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. Read on. And shall be led away captive. Shall be what? Shall be led away captive. Christ is prophesying the same thing Moses said. He said, they shall be led away captive into all nations. What? Into all nations. How do we think that? How? Think about this. How could the Israelites be led away captive into all nations from Jerusalem to America? He said all nations. So how did that happen? Or Africa to America? The only transportation is ships. They didn't have planes until the last war. So that's the war hundred years or so, right? Ships, the same thing Moses prophesied. They should be led away captive into all nations, all ships. Christ was saying the same thing here. Read it again. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Watch this. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. Jerusalem, when the Israelites will be led captive into all nations, the Gentiles will be walking in Jerusalem. So he's telling us right now, the Gentiles are over there, not the true Israelites. Read it again. That's what that's Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Yeah, let's go back to Deuteronomy 2864. Uh, let me go back to this here, Luke. It says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, that's 70 AD, key, key year, and shall be led away captive into all nations. A lot of them went to Africa, a lot of them went up into Europe, a lot of them had relatives in Europe, a lot of them. So they ultimately they were scattered throughout the whole planet, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles. The Gentiles went in there and and took over the land. You had the Palestinians when the when the small heads came in. Key year was 1948. It was it was filled with dark skinned Palestinians, Arabs, so you can understand. So they they then you had the Israelis, which were the people that were living in the Middle East. And followed Judaism. They look different from the small hats. The small hats, you know what we mean by that, are the Edomites. The Israelis could be Arab descent because there were Arabs over there that were following the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability, right? And then you had other people coming up in there. It says they're gonna take they're gonna take that land and they're gonna be in that land. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What does it mean by the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled? When the Most High takes his place out. So who's in the land? The Gentiles. The small hats are Gentiles. The Palestinians are Gentiles. Now, I believe a lot of them could be Israelites. The Israelis are Gentiles, but I believe some of them could be Israelites. Because remember, there was a great mix, uh, mixing among Jake. Until, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, meaning until the time of the end. So we ain't over there. Them small hats are not the people. They would have, based upon this precept right here, the, the, the small hats, the Palestinians and the uh, Israelis. <laughs> then you got the Greek Orthodox people out there. Those are the Gentiles. Now you do have Israelites out there as well, but they're not Gentiles. But until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled is when the Mosai takes them out, destroys that place. <coughs> I'm going to do this and I'm going to listen to a little bit more. Okay, let me see what they, what they, okay. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. By the time, seasons, or opportunities of the Gentiles is meant the period allotted for their full evangelization of blindness is part, in part is happening to Israel, to happen to Israel. Uh, be come in. They they don't they don't go into it. They don't go into it. So let's come back over here. Let's listen to a little bit more. 
small hats, which are the Pacey Edomites, which are Arab-looking people. And that's why a lot of these Palestinians that are, are successful in their, like, uh, they bomb buses and malls and all that, because what they do is they dress up like an Israeli, which really an Israeli looks totally different than a small hat. The Israelis are already there. They, they were of Arab descent. Some of them may be Israelites. I believe some of the Palestinians are Israelites. It's not theirs because the true Israelites are scattered everywhere else. Okay, now are we there in pockets? Yeah, it's a couple of us there. We everywhere still, but as a nation, we're not there. That's the point. We're part of our land. So, touch your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Deuteronomy twenty-eight sixty-four. It's got to be making the link between Deuteronomy twenty-eight. The curse of the law of Christ, but it's not done, it's not fulfilled with Christ dying. We're still under that. You know? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. That's what we read in twice now. Joel and in Luke 21. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Confirm it again, ships. That's how we get there. We get to the Americas, which was it called, but we'll get to that later. It's called something different. You know? And there. Thou shalt serve other gods. So not only will be scattered, you be in idolatry. See? Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And that's representative of the two major religions on earth. Christianity is the wood. Islam is the stone. Those are the two, uh, I, would, I, don't, I don't want to say greatest, but most populated. Uh, uh, pop populous? Well, yeah, pop, yeah, pop populous. Yeah. Christianity is the wood. Islam is a stone. That, 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 that's some slick shit that um, that um, Bishop Nathaniel put in his pre precept package, maybe. Wooden stone meaning churches. And then you can go to mosque. All right? Churches and mosque. And, and whatever religion that you, that place of meeting for, for whatever religion, mainly Christianity, and then you got Islam, you know, a far second. When it says wood and stone, it's talking about the churches. You build buildings from wood, primarily from wood and stone. What about metal? Metal came come from the ground. All right. Metal will be classified as 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 a stone. So that's some no slick slick shit. Was popular before that. Most popular religion on earth. And it just so happens they represent uh, the cross. That's the word of the cross. Yeah. And then the so called Kabbalah stone. And then Mecca is represented by Islam. And that's where you find our people, majority, are in those religions scattered all over the world. 
as part of that verse. And, and notice, notice one thing that comes with that. One of it says, you shall serve other gods, okay, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even means indeed, wood and stone. So what comes with that wooden cross in the churches, in the Caucasian image of Jesus? Meanwhile, the Bible tells us, yeah, Jake, secretly worshiping things, man, where you make idols from wood, wood and stone and metal. So they ain't talking about that. They're crossing the wooden. Do you know they got Jesus pieces? They got crosses made out of different metals. That ain't talking about that. That's talking about those buildings. And it's talking about those idols that they worship too. Like you, we're really here. Okay, like all of you. Christ looked like you. Meanwhile, they give us a false image. That's what this is. We serve other gods. So Christianity is not in the Bible. Christianity is not in the Bible. Right? That's what this is saying. We serve other gods. That, you know, we idolize the cross. We put on the cross tattoo. We put on our chains. Yeah. All these different things. Yeah. You know. Hey, we shall serve other gods with the stone. Now, yeah, you can say idols. You can say churches because they worship, they, they, they cross themselves when they go into the church. So they, they worship the, the church. They worship the teacher of lies, lies uh, Habakkuk 2 and 18, made the idol and the teacher of lies. So you have to have an idol, and then you have somebody to, to break down what the idol means. Oh, this is Christ. This is this guy. You worship him this way, and you worship him that way. They have a thing called a liturgy. So worship other gods, wood and stone. It's talking about the churches. And you can say the idols too. You got certain uh, images, I, I would guess, in, in the name of Islam and Christianity that is made out of ivory. Good. He, he says steeple of the church. So part of the part of the worshiping is worshiping the church itself. You know, you honor the church. You wouldn't think not, nothing negative in your mind when you're passing by a church or you're going in the church. You ain't gonna pee on the corner of a church because you you venerate the church, the building. You bet you venerate the the idols in the church and the teacher of lies. That was that was the image that. Crucified the Messiah. But Christ never said, that's, that's another thing. Like Christ never said you know, to, to show love to him in that way. The graven image. Yeah, the graven image. That's, that was a form of capital punishment. So I guarantee you, George, George Floyd's, uh, his mother and his family, they're going to have an image of a police officer on him. Or Tamir Rice, they're not going to have a gun on them. You understand what I'm saying? The images that, that kill their the family members, then we idolize that thing. Christ never said that. And then, yeah, uh, Isaiah 42 and 8. Mm -hmm. I know it, the cross is closely associated with Christianity. But watch this right here. So you see the Roman Catholic Church or wherever they would be the sign of the cross. They put a lot of power into that raven image. Read it here. Right, and that the first images that they bow down to is the church itself. And, they, and it, there's images on the church. So they worship the whole church. They worship what's inside the church because they have a teacher of lies and the idols that's in the church. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 18. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. You can't praise God with any image. Now you can have a chain or whatever around your neck but that cross. Remember that same cross they held to the face of the Native Americans and the so-called Hispanic Americans. And they were saying, oh, where's your white Jesus to die? He said the same cross. Same cross that people put claim to this day. Go put on your arm and light on fire. That's basically what these white people did when they encountered the indigenous people. They said either believe in the Messiah or die. Where did, where did the Lord, where, where, where did the, the, the disciples, the apostles, the 12, the biggest number that was gathered together, was 5,000, 5,000. It probably had to be more than that. But the number, the exact number is 5,000. Where did they ever go around saying, look, believe in the Messiah or we're going to kill you? That's nowhere in the scripture. So 
this is this is this this man's this is this man's religion. You don't accept his religion. You don't accept that the that the Lord is is a white looking man. They they'll act. They actually killed you, or enslaved you, and then Christopher Columbus brought back with him. He said basic basically he said these will make good slaves. So what he did was he gathered five hundred of them together, brought them back to. Um, uh, what part of Spain was that? If I'm not mistaken, it was either El, El Dorado, Spain. If I'm not mistaken, but it was in somewhere in Spain, and uh, he 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 enslaved them in the name of Christ. Going to use your your name, Christ. Remember the same Christ that you're calling on is the same Christ that Christopher. Columbus, it was called in on. Closely associated with white supremacy. Okay. So-called Renaissance Christianity, when it became plantation Christianity, was nothing but Christianity, was no, is nothing but white supremacy. Christianity, all the, all the franchise of Christianity, when the so-called white man gave it to the slaves, was nothing but a big hate religion. It's a hate religion. It's the, in that religion of Christianity, plantation Christianity is to teach you that the white man's over you and anytime you see the Lord, uh, what is that in Luke when it speaks about um, I will give you many stripes or I'll give you few stripes and the Lord said this and the Lord said that and the slave master would say I'm your Lord. So you want to talk about the biggest hate religion on the planet Earth? Christianity. The Renaissance Christianity. So any questions about the, the curses that befell the Israelites? Because again, you examine all the history. Matter of fact, let me get this point real quick. I want to show you something. Read this point for me. This is from on page 36, and the Bible being that uh, he has a picture when it comes to the Bible. Uh, when, when, when you read the Bible, right, you got to read it from the historical context. You just do it just to memorize scriptures and quotes and everything like that. You know, you have to read the Bible based on the context of it. And you have to know the issue that goes with the Bible. The Bible is the story of history. Well, if you read it with your own eyes, you wouldn't be lined up. You wouldn't be lined up, man. That's clearly against the scriptures. You can't line yourself up. So you put me in the blank. Let me think about um, Pentecostal. Watch this. It's a history book. Watch this. This is uh, a short history of the Western civilization, volume one. Uh, page 36. The most significant of the small nations for the history of Western civilization was that of the Hebrews. To do them justice in a brief account is read it, read it again, read it slow, because I know they, they're not looking at it, so they're going to be able to absorb the words. The most significant of the small nations, the most significant of the small nations for the history of Western civilization, meaning on this side of the planet, on, on the West, was that of the Hebrews. So it said the most significant of the small nations in the West is the Hebrews. I thought they were in Jerusalem. How would they know who's over here? Who would brought y'all ships? The Hebrews, you know? To do them justice in a brief account is virtually impossible. To do them justice in a brief account is impossible. You know? For few people have evoked great interest or more intensive study. Mm -hmm. We are aided in telling their story. Watch this. We are aided. We are helped in telling the Hebrew story right. by a magnificent literature, literary record they created. They created a magnific magnificent literary work they created, right? Their Bible. Their Bible. This is a history book. Read it for again. We are, aided. we are aided in telling their story by a, magnific a magnificent literary I got some results in the other all right, this is the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. 
That's how you know Solomon wrote the book. First, the first verse, first chapter, first verse, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. It wasn't the uh, what do they say the uh, the what's what's the the, the woman um, that escapes me, uh, but she was a woman. It escapes me. This is Songs of Solomon, chapter one, verse one. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now, the point that we want to show that we miss or to highlight is it says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. This is the Shulamite woman. Because they're saying, well, she's talking about kissing the man. You know, that man that Solomon said to kiss, that, that was going to kiss him was, t was talking about the supreme, you know, kiss him with knowledge. The, 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 the Song of Solomon is like, the Song of Solomon is like, a, you know, parabolic, and it's, they're, they're songs. They're like the Psalms. So when they said men, it was talking about the most high. When it said she, my mother, I owe that I wish the thou would suck the breast of my mother. It ain't talking about Solomon bringing some guy to his house and saying, look, mom, I want you to, this man to suck your titties. No, it ain't talking, it ain't talking about his physical mother. The mother's talking about the scriptures, the truth, and somebody teach you the truth. What is that? Isaiah 29. Who, sh who shall he teach doctrine? It's either Isaiah 29 or Isaiah. It's got to be Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's uh, 28. I always get those confused. Isaiah 28. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Then that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the milk, uh, from the breast. Was it talking about? It's talking about the basics. Uh, that's in uh, Peter. I believe that's Second Peter. Second Peter. Is it two verse one or one verse two? Bear, bear me for a minute. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Maybe I was. Uh, f uh, is it second? I don't know. I meant to say first. First Peter. First Peter. Let's try the second chapter. Okay, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So the milk of the, and the breast is talking about the Bible. And you need a teacher that ye may grow that thereby. Let's come on back. Because we read the next part. And Christianity said, oh, this is a black woman. She wrote it. You know, she's talking about herself. No. What does it say again? The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. What does Solomon say in verse 5? Verse 5. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Solomon said himself, he's black. He's describing himself. What Caucasian man would say, I am black? They will not say.
I hate this. Let me do it this way. Hold up. I'm black but calmly. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem, as a tense of Kedar, as a curse of Solomon. Basic stuff. Shachor. <coughs> Which is black. The color black. deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair, the color black. But if, but if the skull be in sight at a stay, and that there is black hair, so it's talking about the color of the hair. Not necessarily the texture. Let's come back over here. I am black. It says, but calmly. Calmly, beautiful, seemly. Uh, Calmly, beautiful, seemly. Now you have wa. You have the word wa, wa, na, uh, wa, which is and, not but. If it was but, it would be, um, is that a, a ball? Not sure. A Hebrew is not up to par like it used to be. It says, as the tents of Kedar. Kedar means what? It means dark. A son of Ishmael, he's probably known as called uh, Qadar, not Qadar, but Qadar, because he was probably the darkest son of the 12 sons of Ishmael. No big deal. Let me go to the root of the word, Qadar. To grow dark. If you want to get technical, blackish. If you want to get technical, the, the, the word here, Qadar, does mean, you know, to mourn. If you want to get technical, but when you go back, that's the root of the word Qadar. And this is this is the word Qadar. Which means a black a black person, so you can understand. Or black the hair is being black, an actual color. They ain't talking about the hair is mourning. Let's come on back, let's listen to a little bit more. It has no relevance to that. Okay, do it again. Verse 5. I am black, but comely, black and beautiful, black and handsome. Verse 1. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, mm -hmm. look not upon me, because I am black. Mm -hmm. Along the coast of Guinea, 
which is low, marshy, and hot. And you can find jet blue. Black complexions, and this is very. Therefore, if not direct, oh, thereof, mm -hmm. if not direct, no, thereof, if not. So watch what it says here. This is page three fifty four. Jeremiah, the prophet, was the son of Hilkiah. The words of Jeremiah to his friends. Thus saith the prophet, chapter eight, verse twenty one. Oh, I am black. End quote. Here, he describes himself to be black. Here, here they knew it was a description. It's like he said, what Caucasian man would say, I am black? She buried him, right? Correct. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Who are your hunters today? Esau was a cunning hunter. When the blood showed forth through the veins. For well, he found no place of repentance. You see that? No place of repentance. We know who did it. Now it's telling us Esau here. But the Bible already said, remember it says he would exalt himself as the eagle. We didn't read that part. We read it. And from the hand of all that hate us. Christians at that time, meaning when Christ comes back, so-called Christians, I mean, this is talking about Christianity. They just use the word Christian, man. but it's talking about the best Christianity. But at that time, it would be far more dreadful than that of the Muhammadans. Meaning, meaning Muslims, okay? Meaning the, the um, so what is what is the purpose of this? Okay, again, you got to know who you are. Like Mr. Coulson Mitchell said earlier, you got to know who the other nations are. Mm -hmm. He said he should die. He said, I don't know who he is. He's from Shem as well. He's not from Shem. Or Windsor. So much different than the same thing here, right? In most cases, these Hebrews by race and moved away, and there was no more sea. This is after the second coming. Read verse 2. Mm -hmm. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. That's where we want to be. Yeah, I'm calling the walls of Babylon. That means the Bible. Go out and teach. Okay, read. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. And from each gate has a trial. Read them. Verse 13. On the east, three gates. You can watch the whole thing. I just want to get to the response. They had a lot of good points. I mean, if you can't see that we are the people, even consider it, then something's wrong with you. I just want to see the response of these guys right here to see if this was a waste of time. <clears throat> this is interesting. It's a lot. Uh, a lot of what you said, uh, I agree. There are also a lot of things that uh, you said that I did not know. And to research, there's a lot of things. So yes. um, definitely want to go back and read it again. You know, get an understanding myself. There are also things that I don't agree with. Um, but the basis of um, what you said, you said you know, the foundation of the process. This is body language right here. When somebody crosses their arms, they I'm not I'm not feeling it. He I guess this is the pet pastor. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. He has his hands clasped, not folded. He's he's open, but we don't know what's in his mind. So he said he got to go back. You know, it's like you're trying to sell somebody something and they don't want to buy it, but they're not going to tell you, no, I'm not interested. Oh, let me think about it. Then they go, they never call you back. But you can clearly see what all that the, the men of IUIC did on this side with all the script, they made it. They made it plain. If 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 I was never in Israel, you show me all the precepts. I would say, look, we're we're Israelites, man. So they they're not feeling it, man. And at the end of the day, as we were dealing with this one guy, which was a big waste of time. Every time we tried to teach this guy something, he would go, "Well, how do you 
it, it was, but but it's all right. It's all right because it showed you one thing. No matter what you tell an Israelite that's ultimately not of the elect, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. I don't see these two getting it. I don't know about him, and I don't know about him. But definitely, you can see he's like, he, they, they're almost like mad. Look, man, I ain't feeling this. I ain't feeling this shit. I ain't feeling it. A white man can't get into the, in the heaven. Good point he made. They they believe that he's a uh, black, but are they also going to believe that the Lord only came for Israel? And there's several scriptures on that. These men of IUC, IUIC showed that. There's some scriptures off the top of my head. Matthews 121, the angel Cabrew came to Joseph and said, you will call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. The angel spoke to Joseph, a Hebrew man in Hebrew. He didn't speak to him in Swahili or Italian or Latin uh, or pig Latin. He, he said in the Hebrew, he said, he, he didn't say Jesus. He said, you will call his name Name is, is uh, the, 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 the word name in the Hebrew is Shem. His name, uh, Shem Wa, which is his name, Yahawashai. And then he broke down what the word, the name means. Yah meaning he, because he will save his people. Hawashai is, um, means deliver us. He shall save his people, deliver his people from their sins. The first great commission of the Lord to the disciples when he went out and started teaching is in Matthew uh, chapter 10. He said, go not into the way of the Gentiles, neither into any city of the Samaritans, that's he not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as he goes, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Basic scriptures. Well, what about the Gentiles? Well, wait a minute. He just said, do not go into the way of the Gentiles. If you're not going into the way of the Gentiles, okay, Gentiles live down there. We're not going there. Samaritans live down there. We ain't going there either. Oh, Israelites live over here. We're going to go over here, and we're going to wake the lost ones up. I mean, that's just, that's just a couple of basic scriptures dealing with Israel that you can't get around. Um, but the Lord, some of the things that you taught, scriptures, living on together, I got them all down. I definitely go checking on the research. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's fine. So any, um, no, no, no. Any, any of the points that you want to touch on now, um, in terms of like, you said, Let me try something. What does a person mean when he crosses his arms? What someone really means when their arms are cross, cross arms can have a variety of meanings for many. And this can often be the case. The perception is that arms crossing means we are feeling anxious, resentant, res, uh, uh, resistant, resistant, tense, insecure, afraid, or responding to distress. Let me try this. Uh, 
Okay, the real message behind the arm cross body position. The majority of arm cross positions are motivated by an individual desire to shut down or and or shut out. She says, but it's not true. Let me read this. This is the definition. The real message behind the arms cross body position, the ma majority, mostly of arms cross position are motivated by an individual's desire to shut down and or shut out she she says but it's not true shut they shut shut down whatever they said they shut down and shut out i ain't feeling it i ain't feeling it and you can look at the face i mean look at the the, the look of the face He's looking, I'm not even going to look at y'all. I'm looking over here. And I hope this brother ain't coming around. We're going to have to talk to him. He's pretty much neutral. But you can clear, you can clearly see that they, 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 they're shutting it out. That's body language right there. You go to any expert of body language, if I'm talking to a woman and she got her arms closed and she ain't smiling, if I tell her a joke, try to be funny, that means she ain't feeling that. That means she's not feeling you. And he's saying pretty much, let, let me get back. Let me think about it. Some stuff you don't agree with, maybe we can clarify or. Um, no, not now. Um, I think the time is on our side. I don't know if y'all are praying for me. So, you know, I'm calling you. <laughs> Listen now. Um, this is and I definitely have. I have more to say. Let, I will say this. Um, when y'all put on some social media, we got this, this, this when we need to sit down and make sure we're different from straight. It's the same, it's the same spirit, same spirit, but it is, it is different. Yeah, it is, it's, it's, it's different. Because, like, like I said, like I was telling you, I can't like, do all the, you know, You notice they haven't brought they their 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 arms are still locked, so they're like and then he's looking at him. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Let's see where this goes. You know, I don't know if he's following him or he following him, or they just had that same. They folded their arms exactly at the same time, but they these they clearly do not see it. They not do not see it. Why? Because they're not of the elect. I don't know if he's being diplomatic or he speaking out of the sincere, sincerity of his out of his heart, whether it's sincere or not. Let me do this real quick. Elect, because when you're dealing with these people, you 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 gotta you're gonna 
you're going to be forced to go back to the basics. You're going to be forced to go to Deuteronomy 28, and all those other scriptures, which are which are basic to us, stuff that we know offhand. We don't got to go to, we can just quote it. Elect is written 17 times in 17 verses, right? God's elect. Now, Israel is the elect of the Most High. As far as the nations, the other nations, the Most High has one chosen nation, but within that nation, you have an elect group of people. The only ones that's going to wake up or not be deceived by the devil okay it's lined up Matthew 24 31 and he shall send his angel angels with a great sound of the trumpet and they shall gather together the elect from the from the four winds and from and uh, from one in the heaven to another Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, what are these pastors and these ministers and these churches going to do when the MOTB comes on the scene? They're going to help them to get it. They, You know, you're going to have church members say, well, I saw a you know, one of them Hebrew is life videos, and they said that it's the mark of the beast. And they, you have pastors that are trained to to teach them that the, that's not the MOTB, that you're not going against the most high. So a lot of you people that go to church, you're gonna you're gonna accept that that uh the MOTB. And if and if these is major Israelite groups keep teaching this. A lot of a lot of y'all, a lot of you, a lot of you guys in these major groups, IUIC, ICBK, they both the leadership both teach that the MOTB is Christianity. Well, you you're safe because you're not a Christian, you're a Hebrew. So that so that has nothing to do with the with the with the uh taking the actual karagma. So a lot of them just blindly listen. A, a lot of them, the simple believeth every word, right? To deceive the what? The hearts of the simple. Whether they paid off or not. You're going you're gonna to cause a lot of the Israelites to be destroyed. Maybe you'll come around. Maybe you'll eventually see it. When you see see them set up them, them stations, them, them, them um, Karagma stations, you might turn around and see it. Or maybe you just a sellout, and you getting a certain amount of uh, a certain check, one with a lot of zeros behind it, to keep these. We don't know. We don't know. But here it is, 2022, and for you to teach that the MOTB is something other than what GMS and and Sakari uh, say it is, you, you you suspect, man. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 22. The false messiahs and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce if it were not, if it were possible, even the elect. The elect are not going to be deceived. The, the elect is not, they're not going to take the, the, the karagma. Luke 18, verse 7. And shall not the Most High avenge his elect, which cry day and night unto him? And that's us. We're constantly doing videos. We're constantly praying to the Lord, complaining to the Lord. We're constantly pushing out this word to the Lord, though he bear long with them. And it goes again. The elect again. The Most High is only dealing with the elect, which is a small number compared to the the whole of Israel. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.